So I feel like we've kind of gotten to a point in the game industry where they are at a crossroads. They, they need to make some tough decisions. These games are just far too expensive to make, and, and there are changes on the way. But there, however, over the last couple of weeks has been uh, some confusion regarding PlayStation's new, more aggressive multi-platform direction. That's their words, not mine. Sony specifically said that they will be taking a more aggressive multi-platform approach. Uh, they're just not seeing the profit margins that they would like to see from their first-party games. So what they want to do is they want to explore this more quote-unquote aggressive multi-platform approach. What exactly does that mean, though? Because right now the problem is that this statement is starting to, you know, stir up some controversy online. I mean, who would have thought, right? But, uh, you know, fans are trying to figure out what exactly they mean by this. And uh, there was even a big write-up today that implied that Sony clarified the situation. Well, that's not really entirely true, but I, I do believe that Sony revealed some information in the past that, you know, kind of lays out their near and long-term future. So we're going to talk about that today, and then also we will talk about Xbox Game Pass as they revealed their next lineup of games, and we're also going to talk about the latest on the Helldivers 2 server situation, because I know a lot of you are anxiously awaiting to play that game in a more timely manner. It is a very, very fun game. Uh, let's go and get right into things, though, and a Immediately, let's go and get into this PlayStation multi-platform situation. As I've said multiple times already, this more aggressive multi-platform approach that they claim to be taking is more than likely in regards to PlayStation and PC. That is the two big platforms that you should expect to see more PlayStation games on in the future. Now, there might be some other quote-unquote platforms included, which we'll kind of get into in just a moment. Uh, but one thing that I, I can say is, you know, don't go in expecting Sony to suddenly release their games on rival platforms. This really is just not realistic for the time being, outside of a few games like Bungie's games or MLB The Show. Uh, but it does seem like, you know, some outlets are, are maybe taking this conspiracy theory uh, a little too serious, and they're even trying to dispel these rumors. I mean, you can actually see here written up by Engadget uh, that they said Sony may shrink the gap between launches of its PlayStation exclusives and PC ports. Company president Hiroki Totoki suggested in a post-earnings call Q&A session Wednesday via VGC that he wants PlayStation to go aggressive on improving our margin performance, with multi-platform games playing a significant role. He clarified in the talk that by multi-platform, he meant on PlayStation and PC, not Xbox or Switch. So... You know, this was making the rounds today, and people were kind of using this as some kind of confirmation that he clarified something. The only problem with all of that is that that's not actually what was said. In the official transcript, which I'll have a link in the description below, Sony never actually clarified anything. Instead, this is what they said. When it comes to the PlayStation 5, one challenge that sets this console cycle apart from the PlayStation 4 and previous generations is that we find it difficult to reduce our costs during the course of the cycle. Unlike high-spec PCs, PlayStation consoles enable us to offer an immersive experience for many people in a safe environment with affordable price. To offer that kind of experience with costs for components like chips and memories on the rise, one key will be that we continue to sell consoles without substantial discounts during the course of its product life life cycle by engaging in product planning that ensures affordability for consumers. Another driver will be first-party titles, strong titles that achieve growth on PlayStation 5, PCs, and other platforms will widen our margins. We believe that we have opportunities for margin improvement and intend to pursue them aggressively. So the thing about this statement is no, they don't mention Nintendo and Xbox specifically. They only name PlayStation 5 and PC. But the mention of other unnamed platforms, that's what's drawing a lot of attention online. Now, personally, I think this has been blown out of proportion, as the internet often likes to do. Uh, but I do think the best way to kind of explain this is by looking at some of the PlayStation's infographics that was shared in the past. You can see one such infographic here that states a transformation from PlayStation's current console-centric approach to a future where large elements of our community extend beyond the console. It then goes on to show more platforms, which includes PC and mobile, virtual 
reality, cloud, and even the metaverse. So I think that that's probably what Sony is referring to when mentioning these other unnamed platforms. They have been making investments in mobile games as well as the cloud. Just last year, they launched their 4K cloud game streaming service, and I, I think we're really going to start to see a big push into these platforms being mobile and cloud, really, I'd say, over the next 10 years. And you can even use Xbox as one such example. We know that Xbox is working on a gaming mobile storefront, and it might even launch as early as this year. Now, the reason that I bring this up is because this strategy is a big part of both of their futures. Now, they might be going about it in different ways, and we can even debate which one is doing it better, but both are looking to expand outside of just their consoles. It's more than clear by this point that they're not seeing the growth that they would like to see from their console business. And in some cases, especially with PlayStation, their games are just so ridiculously expensive to make. Again, that's the big problem that they're running into. So because of that, and they're seeing these low margins of profit, they want to expand their reach. Now, Xbox, you know, they're willing to port some of their games over to other consoles, but a big part of that's also because they're not really in the same position as PlayStation. Sony being in a more dominant position with their consoles, though, this really more than likely means PlayStation consoles, PC, mobile, and cloud gaming. So I think for the time being, some fans, whether intentional or not, uh, I, I think some people might be taking this multi-platform statement a little out of context. Don't take this as meaning rival consoles or anything like that, because that's likely not what this means. I think the more legitimate question currently is just how aggressive... Sony will be when it comes to their PC games from this point forward. It seems like their strategy so far has been to release their big single-player games on PC about two years after their console counterpart, but because of this new statement and the way it reads, you do have to kind of wonder if they're maybe thinking about shortening that time frame, or, or maybe they're just flat out going to remove that in the future to release them day and date together. Now, I'm not saying that's what's for sure going to happen, but, you know, the evidence is there. PlayStation wants to make more money outside of the consoles. They've said as much in the past. And PC is a great opportunity for them to do just that. Just look at something like Helldivers 2 and all the success that it's currently having. Now, of course, that is a live service game, but, you know, when it comes to their single player games, I, I think that's where they might have to strike a good balance in how they approach that situation because their consoles are still incredibly important. They have a lot of subscriptions that they sell on there, and they also make a lot of money by selling third-party games and microtransactions and things like that. But that's where I want to ask you, if you were Sony... What would you do? Would you shorten PlayStation's timed exclusivity, and if so, by how much? Let me hear what you think they should do in the comments below. All right, so let's go and move over to some Xbox news because they just revealed their next wave of games for Xbox Game Pass. That's always something exciting to look forward to. And you can see here, this includes Madden 24, Bluey, the video game, Indivisible, Maneater, Space Engineers, Tells of Arise, and Warhammer Bolt Gun. Now, I think this is a fairly decent lineup. This is coming off the release for Persona 3 Reloaded that just released earlier this month, and I, <laughs> I imagine a lot of people are still playing through that game. It is amazing after all. Go check it out if you haven't already. Uh, but if you are looking for your next game, or games, Tales of Arise is an immediate standout on this list. This is yet another JRPG, and you know what? They, they've really done a good job at getting these big JRPGs for Xbox Game Pass, and, and Tales of Arise is immediately one of their better gets. This is a high-quality JRPG with fun combat, a great art style, and a rich story to follow. It, it'll take you roughly 40 hours to complete its main campaign alone, uh, so this is another game that, you know, it's going to keep you plenty busy uh, for the long haul. I, I really cannot recommend Tales of Arise enough, though, and to see it come over to Game Pass today, by the way, uh, I hope this franchise can continue to grow just that much more, because, you know, we do need more JRPGs like this. Another game that's quietly a pretty good get here, though, is Bluey. I mean, okay, yeah, this is not a game that most of us are going to play. I get that and everything, uh, but for anybody who has kids, this is a great addition. I mean, I can't necessarily vouch for this game myself. I don't know how it compares to the show, but I do know that kids absolutely love Bluey. It's a very popular kids show, and now 
those kids can play this game and interact with the characters that they love so much via Xbox Game Pass. So, I don't know. I, I, I like when Xbox gets these games that are great for families. I think that's something that's so often overlooked when it comes to modern gaming. We need more games that appeals to younger ages as well. A lot of us probably started playing as kids. I started playing when I was two years old. And, and that's why I like seeing this inclusion here. It will be out on February 22nd. Outside of those, though, maybe try uh, Warhammer Bolt Gun. This is an old-school first-person shooter with a very colorful art style, and a lot of people do seem to like this game. It does have a 91% recommendation rate on Steam, and that's always a really good sign. When you see other gamers enjoy these more niche experiences, and if you like similar games... There, there's a pretty good chance that you might enjoy it as well. So if you like retro shooters, Bolt Gun will launch in a Game Pass on March 5th. Okay, so we do have a few more topics to go over, including Helldivers 2. I know there's been a lot of excitement for this game, and for good reason, it's incredibly fun, but there's also been a lot of frustration over its server issues, and unfortunately, it does sound like that could last a while longer. It might not be an easy fix after all. As we all know, the servers are just overloaded right now because they, they weren't prepared for this amount of success. The success it's had is just far above and beyond what most people were expecting for Helldivers 2. I mean, that's ultimately a great problem to have, but the assumption that they can just go out and buy more servers to solve the problem might not be the case after all, the Helldivers 2 CEO did respond by saying, it's not a matter of money or buying more servers. It's a matter of labor. We need to optimize the backend code. We are hitting some real limits. So with that, I, I guess we're just going to have to kind of be patient and, and let this play out. It's hard to tell when it'll be fixed. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is a great game. And, and I'm glad that people are recognizing that. I mean, I'd rather them have these launch problems early on because it's so successful. That way it can have an even better future when it does eventually get fixed. Because with that influx of players, I'm sure Arrowhead's going to get an increased amount of investment from Sony. And that will push Helldivers 2 for a long, long time in the future. Now, speaking of live service games, though, we allegedly are in for a surprise for both Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio. I mean, we've known for a while that Sega is bringing back some of these dormant IP, and, you know, that's incredibly exciting and everything. But, allegedly, both these games will come as live service titles or so it's claimed. This is coming from the same leaker who revealed information for various Persona titles in the past, and according to them, Crazy Taxi is modeled after AAA live service games such as Fortnite. There are plans for live service events, collaborations, and customizations. The current plan is to create a live service games as a service reboot, as well as a remake of the original Crazy Taxi. They went on to say that Crazy Taxi will have a 100 player survival mode, so I guess a battle royale is planned, which is certainly unexpected. I'm personally not really into battle rails myself, but, you know, at the same time, I think this could be an interesting twist for the genre. As for Jet Set Radio, though, he didn't really elaborate quite as much. They said that both Crazy Taxi and Jet Set are live service games that are also having remakes before reboots release. Jet Set is closer in gameplay to Fortnite than Crazy Taxi, and there are shooting elements planned. So, I mean... I'm not really sure if this is what people were hoping for when they heard about these reboots, but I, I guess if there is a silver lining here, they do mention that both are getting remakes as well. So in that way, fans will kind of get the best of both worlds. Uh, and to be fair here, uh, we do still need to see these games ourselves before making our judgment too soon. Live service games gets a bad rap. And, and I think a lot of that is because companies, they, they try to cash in on that mythical cash cow. And the problem with that is that most of these games tends to follow a trend. They don't really separate themselves from the competition. They just try to be similar. But if you come out with unique and fresh ideas, that's something that fans might pay attention to. Again, just look at Helldivers 2 as an example and what it's doing right now, or, or really even F-099 from last year. You know, F-099, it takes that overused Battle Royale formula but at the same time, they did something unique and fresh with that idea, and fans enjoyed it. So I don't want to immediately rule out these Sega games just because they might be live service titles. You know, for that matter, this is only a rumor for the time being. So, you know, we need to wait for confirmation. Uh, but if true, let me know what you all think about all of this. Does this affect your excitement at all or not? 
Anyways, though, that's going to be it for this episode. Again, I do think that the future of gaming is currently changing, and it does kind of feel like a lot of these companies are at a little bit of a crossroads right now, and, and that is something that we're seeing within PlayStation. They do have some decisions to make over there, uh, but until next time, peace out.